this video I want to show you what areas east of Asheville looks like after we got hit with a hurricane or storm whatever you want to call it I know people already arguing even about that the point is I want to show you what it looks like east of Asheville Swananova is one of the areas that got hit really really hard and this is what I'm gonna show you and yes I'm in Asheville I'm in the Asheville area because a this is where I live B these are the areas I can access right now without clogging up other areas that do not need people documenting what the hell is happening but they need volunteers I have two small kids and I just cannot at this point travel and be gone for a day making these videos so stay tuned for that a lot of downtowns including downtown Asheville didn't get much damage at all um, some of them including like I said Asheville looks like Black Mountain too are sitting pretty high or higher high enough to where they didn't get swept away by flash flooding probably had some trees falling down but I don't see anything extreme so far a lot of churches a lot of schools fire departments um, I guess uh, pretty much every fire department has all these drives for supplies food, clothes that they organize and where people can bring supplies to and distribute from. So this is still Black Mountain. I'm not going to probably spend too much time here in Black Mountain just because um, it's going to be a long video and it can take um, a lot of time to do that. But I did want to also show, you know, some parts of areas that don't look like anything even happened here. I mean, some fallen trees, of course, but that's about it. And I wanted to show it because a lot of people, I see it in the comments of my video, in the comments of some other people's videos on social media, people are just kind of making comments like, oh, put a fork in Asheville and, you know, the whole area. It's done for the next decade, blah, blah, blah. It's all gone. There, there's a smell of decay and just all kinds of crazy stuff. There is a ton of unidentified bodies at morgue at the hospital all that kind of stuff but we here in Asheville in Black Mountain I talk to people in Lake Lure who I know personally they don't see bodies floating down anywhere they don't see bodies stuck in the trees so it's just crazy what people come up with on social media and internet in general what I, I guess one of the point is is that it's not like Florida, where the hurricane hits and it's all flat and everything is just wiped out. Everything is flooded. Everything is wiped out. Every house is destroyed, you know, or every other house. Here, like I said, some parts, they don't look like anything even happened. Like maybe a few fallen trees and that's it. And then some other parts, you turn around, you go like a mile or half a mile down the road and you look and it's like there was a mudslide and the neighborhood is gone or severely damaged. Montreat, just, you know, area right next to Black Mountain, was flooded. There was basically a river going down this road right here. All this was flooded. There was just all this was underwater during the storm. See how much sand there is. And um, I'm surprised that that bridge is still there. But some of the road, parts of the roads collapsed. So this is right next to Montreal Town Hall. And this is just a tiny example of what road damage looks like all over our region. Look at this, massive. Roots everywhere, trees everywhere, trash everywhere. And so, this is not even Swananoa River. This is a flat creek, I never even heard of it. I mean, you can see, like you can barely even see it. And a few people who reach out to me who wanna relocate here, 
their dream is to be, you know, in the mountains and live by the creek. This creek, look how, how low it is right now, how high I am. It got up, and of course, again, this was once in a thousand year type of event. It got up and everything, all this, all this was flooded. But still, I mean, it's not gone. The area is not gone. There are houses up there, I'm sure they were probably fine, besides some trees maybe falling on them. So this is Montreat, just across the street from the creek. So when people say everything is gone, put a fork on it, they don't know what they're talking about. I mean, I did not even knew the extent. And yes, some areas are really, really, really bad, but then some are not so bad at all. So stop, stop with the nonsense and send positive vibes and strength our way and not all the negative energy. We don't need that. Big shout out to all the firefighters, first responders. They've been really working nonstop. And you know what? Nobody hears from them on TikTok. It's influencers who are not even here talking all kinds of crazy stuff about what's going on. And even they're talking shit about first responders that are here, boots on the ground, saving people. So that makes me really upset and mad for them. Now I'm back in Swananoa, gonna show you, gonna try to get a few different neighborhoods and show you what it looks like here. So this is Swananoa too. You see people, people are putting stuff in the dumpster because they got flooded, everything got destroyed, their furniture, their belongings. Um, so we see quite a few communities uh, all across that have to do that, unfortunately. This is Grovemont. I just featured it in one of recent videos. Um, their community center was serving as a place where people can bring donations and as a distribution center. I know some parts of it got flooded, property got damaged. I don't think there was like a lot of flash flooding here on this side. Here on, it doesn't even look like they had much flooding or flash flooding, maybe again, fallen trees probably, but everything looks like it used to. And this is right outside of Grovemont on the other side, kind of on the lower side. And see, this is what I mean by right around the corner. Oh shit, look, oh my God. Literally, right around the corner, everything is just done. Oh my God. Holy shit, this looks like a war zone, seriously. Oh. Well, for a gas station on the corner. Wow. Storage space. Place. So, yeah, some areas are done. Some areas are really, they really look like they're done. But it's not 100% like that. And that's what I wanna wanted to show you. It's not all doom and gloom. But, of course, when you see stuff like that, it feels like this is, you know, the end of the world. And that's exactly what it felt like to us when we first got our internet back. Well, not the internet, but the cell, cell service back. And we start seeing all these images and all these people start posting, oh, you know, Swan and Owa is gone. And we're like, wow, like the whole Swan and Owa is gone? Like, what? You know. But then, again, clickbait type of shit. That's somebody's mattress. Somebody's, I don't know, bedding, couch, bed. So the water was higher than our car right now here. Um, power lines are down and um, Swan and Ola River. <laughs> that got everyone, a lot of areas messed up. All right. I think I'm done for today. It's getting dark. We need to get back to our kids. 
um, who are with our neighbors right now. I'll be back tomorrow to finish this video off, show you a few more communities in Swannanova, east of Asheville, um, and show you what it looks like, what it really looks like. There's so much dust from, um, you know, all the sand and debris and soil that was just washed onto the road. It looks like, you know, where, I don't know, even, I don't even know where we are at right now. <laughs> um, I think this is a, a high school, a oh, community high school, yeah, in Swannanoa. Again, that's another, you know, example of a center drop off, pick up supplies and stuff like that. I was supposed to meet with a friend of mine who is also uh, my fellow realtor who lives here in Swannanova in Beacon Village, historic Beacon Village. I actually covered it just recently in one of my videos about Swannanova and its um, top neighborhoods. Well, look at all this. Um, Beacon Village is, I don't know if it's gone. I don't know if it's salvageable. It's just... It's hard to tell. Uh, they're not here. All the neighbors' houses pretty much, much look same. It's, it's just crazy. I came across their neighbors who explained to me that um, some of these markings on the houses, <clears throat> I see like a yellow uh, cross in the circle. It means the house was inspected. And I was like, inspected for what? And they're like, full bodies. Um, and they said the Grovemont neighborhood across the street where I was there yesterday. And I mean, it's big, so I wasn't in all of it. It's, he said that's where one of the families died. They were swept away while they were sleeping. And the house was just swept away. And I never found my friend because they probably took off at 5 p.m. And people, uh, from what I was told, uh, just getting tired, being here all day, every day, trying to clean up. Um, I found her neighbor. Hello. Uh, this is at, at Tessica. And she is basically just kind of coordinated a lot of stuff here. She lives here. So um, what what happened? We we got an evacuation notice on our phones at 6 a.m. And our street... On Friday. Uh, on Friday. Uh, so drunk. But our street was already a river and impassable by car, so we had to get people on the roof or into attics or garages. Um, the water started receding by 11, but more than half the homes on this street were completely submerged. And even if they weren't completely submerged, water did get inside well enough that mold is going to take over soon. And there was inch and inches of mud on the floor. We're, we're talking total loss for... 25 to 30 homes on this street that you know has been a very tight-knit community Did you for years uh, I, I, we we lost it. we lost track of them um, but I think we have found everyone so far okay. it took a week to find um, one of my neighbors that I've been looking for diligently since day one mm -hmm. he had floated down the street on a couch cushion yelling for people to get out uh, and to get onto their roofs and and he was thankfully evacuated but we couldn't find him for seven days and so we weren't sure if he was alive. All right. Um, who's helping you? So far... Who's been helping you and helping you now? So far, we had um, an incident commander come in that has been trained in emergency management, and he has been helping us try to find resources and make connections. Uh, his name has, is Russ, and he's been great because he got us organized as a neighborhood to figure out where to even start. Mm -hmm. And we have seen on the ground, World Central Kitchen has been feeding us. Uh, I've seen on the ground Red Cross. I've seen Samaritan's Purse. Our neighbors mostly. Our neighbors are packing up everything they can find and bringing them and saying, what can I give you? Mm -hmm. 
So a lot of the help that we have gotten has been other people in crisis that are just doing their best to make sure that we are all taken care of. Um, and I'm hoping to get in contact with another organization to get mold out of these homes and save as many as possible called uh, Light in the Storm. So basically, up until this point, you've been doing everything by yourself. Oh, yeah. With your I mean, hands trying to figure this out. It, yes. How to get. So first thing that we're doing is getting all the damaged furniture, furnishings, belongings out of the house. Yes. Because everything is in mud. And, and all these houses are single story homes. They're not like, it's not like. You can put something upstairs. This is the affordable housing for the Asheville area. I mean, this is where people can afford to live that don't come from money. And and now we have lost that resource as well, you know. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to have to rebuild with nothing because we have no flood insurance. We weren't supposed to be flooded. Right. Um, all right. So next stage is they need to make sure they can get to every house they can with somebody's help, hopefully. So yes. who's going to help them? Where are all the agencies? Where, where is all the help? Where, 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 where is all this? It's just so slow to get to us because people, we've been cut off communications wise. So people don't even know how bad it is here. And we've had to take things into our own hands and organize as a neighborhood to find out who knows anything. Right. So the, what they need now is help re, uh, mitigating mold because if that sets in, that's it game over for a lot of these houses and a lot of these people. That's why they wear a lot of these people here who are here still. Uh, they, they wear masks. Um, yes, very important. Um, so that's that's the situation right here in Swannanoa in Beacon Village, historic Beacon Village. I covered it, like I said, just a few videos ago um, as one of the affordable places in Swannanoa and, you know, in Asheville. Yes. Thank you so much for coming and seeing us. And please don't forget us. Yes. It's going to be a very long recovery here, but we're in it for the long haul. Yeah. The thing is that people do not want to leave. These homes have been here for like 100 years. There's a generation. Generations. They don't want to leave. They want to save their neighborhood and they need help. They need everyone's help. Please. Everything is covered with dirt and dust and just... It's gonna take some time to clean all this up. Street lights uh, still don't work here in Swannanoa, and it's been what ten days since the hurricane. Um, I don't know if they have electricity anywhere here. Uh, oh, this one works here, but uh, you know I have to say I, I'm kind of pleasantly surprised how people were able to drive respectfully without accidents. At least I haven't seen any while none of the street lights worked. This one definitely was not supposed to be here. It got washed onto the street. So I'm going a little higher up in elevation. It's kind of hard to tell from here probably, but the higher you are, better chances you have to be away from a creek or a stream or a river, a bunch of fallen trees. And so, I guess I don't even know what the point of this video is besides to get the word out that this community needs help. They, of course, need, need help cleaning up, rebuilding, mitigating mold issues. I don't know who, who that is. I don't know who can do it. That's why I'm putting it out here. I'm sure there's a lot smarter people out there than me who knows the resources who knows maybe agencies right now they were telling me that nobody can go in those homes who unless they have a full suit and a 100 mask on boots gloves all that you know all the ppe because it, it's just it's it's not safe to be in, the, in them they need manpower they need people with skills they need people with expertise and experience mitigating this kind of stuff situation they need resources so just putting it out there reach out to me i'll be happy to connect you with those who i need the best i can this actual suburb got a short end of the stick so to speak and they are getting little to no help they need help desperately now and i don't know who that is so i'm putting this message out there